and Great Lakes region, bananas provide the staple food for more than 20 million people in both rural and urban areas. According to Food and Agriculture Report of 1998, it was estimated that annual per capita consumption of bananas reaches 660 kilograms in some parts of the region, which is the highest in the world. Undoubtedly, Uganda is the world's largest producer of bananas, nearly of which are consumed locally. In Uganda, banana consumption is estimated at 228 kilograms per habitant per year, making Ugandans the largest banana consumers in the world. According to the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development, more than 75% of the smallholder farmers in Uganda grow bananas, accounting for 54% of the total tonnage of fresh foods produced. Banana is considered as one of the most important food security crop, ensuring continued supply for dietary carbohydrates among the rural and urban populations in the country. This is attributed to the plant's ability to fruit all year round, coupled with the country's moderately fertile soils with high organic matter content. In terms of revenue and contribution to gross domestic product, banana is the most important cash crop in Uganda, contributing between 8 to 22 percent of the national agricultural rural revenue. Banana is a, a staple food for the people of the Renzo region and uh, on a daily basis, uh, at least each household is able to have a meal of banana. Be it once a day, but at times, when, uh, at times uh, some households, when they don't have banana as part of their meal, they feel as if they haven't had food. So that really shows the, the, the importance we, we, we attach to banana as a region. And so, is the income that accrues from, from banana, but also when you look at banana uh, as a, 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 a perennial crop, but also an all-round food security crop. Because the way banana is managed, it can be able to, to support a household to have food all year through, even when you don't preserve it. Because if you, if you manage your banana plantation very well, you are able to, to, to get, to get uh, uh, a, a bunch of banana either on a weekly basis or, if, or even on a daily basis depending on how you have been able to follow the, 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 the agreed agronomic practices of, of banana. Current national banana production in the country is estimated at 9 million metric tons per annum, counting for approximately 15% of the total global production. Therefore, the economic importance of bananas cannot be undermined at all levels of the economy. For instance, it is estimated that Kabarole district alone sells about 40 lorries of bananas to Kampala daily and collects about 40 billion shillings annually from the sale of Matoke, excluding banana sales to Bundibuju, Kasese districts and internally are within Fort Porto town. However, this may be no more because of the deadly banana bacterial wilt PBW disease that completely destroys the banana crop and is estimated to be costing Uganda about 360 million US dollars per annum, which is about 90% of overall banana contribution to the gross domestic product. Banana bacterial wilt is a disease that attacks all types of bananas caused by a bacteria called Santhomonas campestris PV musa serum. Banana bacterial wilt is a very destructive disease with potential to wipe out all banana plantations within a short period of time if not controlled and is therefore a big threat to banana farmers in East Africa. In Africa, the disease was first reported in Ethiopia over 40 years ago. 
The disease has rapidly spread to all major banana-growing countries in Africa, especially in East African countries of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Burundi. In Uganda, banana bacteria wilt was first seen in the Kayunga district in 2001 and swiftly spread to all major banana producing districts, causing huge destructions both in terms of food and incomes. In 2003, the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries formulated a research and development strategy for the control of the disease, which was implemented with some degree of success between 2005 to 2007. However, the disease struck again and has continued frustrating many banana farmers across the country, causing huge financial losses at both household and national levels. The disease is transmitted mechanically through two major ways, which include contaminated cutting tools such as pangas, hoes, delifers, and any other material used on the farm that injures the banana plants allowing the disease to penetrate it. <laughs> This is the most common cause of transmission in areas where farmers intensively manage banana plantations using various tools as the farmers unknowingly spread the disease while trying to maintain their plantation in a good state. Various researches conducted by various agricultural stakeholders have indicated that the bacteria can stay alive on non-steel farm tools for about five days and about 18 days on tools made of steel. This practically means that the banana farmers have to be vigilant on how tools are used on their farms through limiting and disinfecting those that must be used in the garden, especially from unclear sources. The second commonest model transmission is by animals and insects such as cattle, sheep, goats, bees and other aphids. This is common in areas where farmers do not intensively use tools in their gardens, especially the careless, lazy and absentee farmers. This mode of transmission is mainly through insects such as bees that visit the banana meal buds to either collect nectar or feed on the sap that oozes out when they are injured, hence transferring the disease to uninfected banana plants. It's therefore advised that the banana farmers should avoid removing male buds using sharp tools. Umukanana ni gueta gaku kutuisa HT chameinabidi. So atia watwa HT chawe, chameinabidi, no wabo no zakutwa umukanana, umukanana no twa umukanana, mkogu ogoku se no lewa higuru gumazire kuruga omuchitochi, otabuleka ukabanza wazahare, niko no tayo HT chawe chameinabidi city. No guhagura umukana no gongo go no nyora kuli kwaza kunyora nukuwa so mudingo kuli kwaza kugwansi nukuwa leba kwaza kugwansi hati ya enjoshi tekeja unguya hisa ukujira ukuba. Banana farmers need to understand that banana bacteria wilt infected plants may take a period between 14 to 90 days before they exhibit any disease signs and symptoms. This period is called latent infection and is the most dangerous period and major source of disease in Oklam. During latent infection, the farmers massively spread the disease unknowingly through pruning, plowing, harvesting leaves either for domestic purposes, beer preparation, or sold to market. It is advisable that when farmers are suspicious or not sure whether their banana plantations are safe, they must suspend all field activities including pruning, plowing, and harvesting leaves for a period of three months. After the three months, the farmers can easily tell which plants have been infected to what extent and what control measures can be administered to the plants.
ako boruk temera ne fuka ne fuka ne tema ho kinde mama osango rgonjo bono rumasire ko the disease manifests in many ways but the common ones are prematurely drying of banana leaves scorching of leaves premature ripening of fruits and rotten pseudo stains the premature ripened bananas are not palatable and cannot be eaten by any animals including the pigs hai maka kubo hambrizo kwa kitama kichum to sakiri ni chigumanga na kimki bado wokira gire putte sakiri habo kwano sanga kumanyo bruere bunu bunu gobi kuteme kitoko kina gire putne kyanga the deadly disease is fast spreading and is reported to have destroyed about 33% of banana plantations in Kabarole district alone and over 48% in other neighboring districts. Jotoke tutalvanize yakanya mukiyari bitoke byakiya mu ngonjo hanyuma yokukeho mu ngonjo za bantu no sange bitoke tibiriyo kandi mu nimi yokusange na katoke kamurundu bibiri mu rugonjo na katembeza kimusente za haigu. So na yobo kaleta hano akatoke katembeza za haigu it is for this reason that Kabarole Research and Resource Center, KRC, a non-governmental organization operating in the Renzori region, has joined hands with other agricultural stakeholders in fight against banana bacterial wilt disease. What is very important to note in this region, and Kabarole district in particular, is that... Uh, Banana production has not only become uh, uh, a domestic food, but also has uh, stretched into the commercial markets, not only the local markets, but also the international or regional markets. Bananas being affected by banana bacterial wilt means impacting greatly on uh, food production at household level but also affecting international markets. So, Cabral Research and Resource Center, which has been promoting sustainable production, but also promoting food security at household level, found this one as a big challenge and uh, devised strategies of making sure that uh, the, uh, the, the impact of banana bacterial wilt on the production of banana is uh, greatly reduced. Considering the huge danger caused by the disease, KRC is taking the lead, aiming at accurate information production, dissemination and farmer sensitizations on the various ways through which the disease spreads, and how the banana farmers can prevent the disease spread to avoid further infections. Particular emphasis by KRC has been laid on enabling banana farmers understand the mode of disease spread, control and management techniques, and the likely social, economic and political impacts should the farmers relax and let the disease destroy their plantations. KRC has achieved this through organizing vigorous community sensitization meetings, setting up banana bacterial wilt control task forces at different levels, establishment of banana bacterial wilt control demonstration sites for practical hands-on training of the farmers on banana bacterial wilt control and management. <laughs> Also, various drama shows, radio talk shows and other information has been produced and shared with the banana farmers through the farmer enterprise development and information units. These measures have drastically improved the farmers' understanding of the disease, their consciousness and their skills in the disease control and management. No mbwiro bwe nyume bitoke mbeba byali bitolemeto ali takumanya kuroka ku nko kutora bikora bitu KRC yeteriye muna amani hatu no nyono bakubaninda abantu ni barabano wambagamba nanka bitoke byabukoze no le ne janalo rana kwa kani nyanda nyakambere kim no le kim na kuora kim byayo yongya kubanka amtin the most effective control measure of banana bacterial wilt disease is field sanitation and hygiene for all banana plantations just as it is done for humans and animals to control most bacterial infections. Simple agronomic practices such as removal of all male buds from young banana bunches using a forked stick 
disinfection with jig of all farm tools used on sick or suspicious plants for at least five seconds. Use of clean suckers from known sources and limiting visitors to their plantations, especially banana traders, that leads to effective disease control and management of the disease. With continuous efforts from KRC, the banana farmers from Kasenda and Kichwamba sub-counties have managed to control the crisis and kept their plantations safe for sustained production, food security and incomes. Uh, we have eight demonstration gardens, four of which are in Kasenda and four are in Kichwamba, and these are the main training grounds for the farmers, and farmers learn by seeing and practicing. So far we have registered very good progress. 400 farmers have been able to attend the trainings, and out of these, uh, about 80% have, have implemented uh, the practices in their gardens, and this was uh, revealed during the, the last transit.